Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. I am Scott. That's Wash. He's a camera hog. We are doing part two of the ranking of all Stephen King books. Last time we did books 91 through 51. This week we're going to do books 50 through 1. Let's go. This may be one of my most controversial rankings. Uh, number 50 is Pet Cemetery. I don't like Pet Cemetery. One, because of the subject matter. It's not one that I, I reread often. But also, I really dislike pretty much every character in here. Obviously, I don't dislike Gage because I'm not a dick. And I don't dislike Ellie. Maybe King dislikes Ellie, which if you get to the end of the book, you you may see why I question whether or not he likes Ellie. Uh, but yeah, I really dislike Lewis Creed. I really dislike Judd. And I'll have to be honest, when I first read the book, I really liked Judd. But when I first read the book, I was a, a teenager, like I was with Rage. And uh, Judd's not a good guy. And it, maybe that's my fault for initially thinking, hey, Judd's a good guy. And then as I get older, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Judd's a dick. But yeah, I don't, I don't enjoy it. I know that it's a, a top 10, top 5, top 3, top book for some people. But yeah, it's an interesting story. But Probably the number one thing for me with King is characters. And that just didn't do it for me with the characters. Number 49 is Finder's Keeper, which is book two of the Bill Hodges trilogy. Honestly, it, mainly because there's not enough of Hodges and, and his friends in it. I, I do like the beginning of the novel, but honestly, after that, until Hodges... And everybody comes in. I'm just not as interested in it. And it probably could have been a book without Finders Keepers crew. It's fine. Number 48 is Everything's Eventual. Uh, it's 14 short stories or short stories and novellas. It probably doesn't have as many highs as the bizarre bad dreams, but it has far fewer lows than it does also. Uh, Aut Autopsy Room 4 is hilarious and creepy. Uh, the Man in the Black Suit, which I, I think is a decent story, but it did win the O. Henry Award. And I, I don't think that there's a bad story in here. Uh Maybe that feeling you can only say what it is in French. But everything else is interesting. And also, King just gets a little weird in this uh, book, which I'm fine with. But yeah, I, not necessarily any ones that really stand out. Um, but pretty much almost everyone is decent to close to great. Uh, number 47 is End of Watch, book three of the Bill Hodges trilogy. Uh, it's it's good book. I enjoy it. I enjoy Bill Hodges. I like Holly Gibney. I like Jerome. I don't always like how King uses Jerome. Uh, really, dude? I don't... Really, I don't really feel that there needed to be a supernatural element in here. I understand, based on how book one ended, that you had to have the antagonist come up again somehow. But that's the only thing that has it more in the middle of the pack. Uh, number 46 is Wolves of the Kala, Dark Tower 5. Much less Mia than in Dark Tower 6, so that 
pumps it up a little bit. Uh, we also get Father Callahan, who was in Sam's Lot, appears in here. It is like I feel Song of Susanna is kind of just in a holding pattern. But it's a fun holding pattern, and uh, it, it it's it's a good read. It's just not what I was expecting uh, from the Dark Tower after waiting so long after Wizard and Glass. Still fun, though. Uh, 45, Hearts and Atlantis. I will say that both Low Men and Yellow Coats and Hearts and Atlantis novella are both great novellas. Uh, this book is essentially about the Vietnam era, even though Low, even though Low Men in Yellow Coats was uh, written about the 1950s time frame, it's a setup for uh, the Vietnam era. I really love Hearts and Atlantis. It's probably my favorite story in here. My problem is I think it drops dramatically after that. I think Blind Willie is not needed. It's not an interesting tale, not a character that I care about. Uh, the next two stories, Why We're in Vietnam, I believe, and The Heavenly Shades of Night Are Falling, are both good reads, but it's just after those first two, it, just a bit of a drop for me. Number 44 is The Gunslinger, the revised version. Why is this lower than The Gunslinger, the original version? Because I haven't talked about that yet. You know it's higher up. Because I look down a little bit on revised editions. It's not like there's not stuff in here I enjoy. But I just don't like the thought of it being different than what I originally read. And the first Gunslinger was the one that, you know, I first read. I also don't like the retconning kind of like, oh, let's put 19 everywhere in here. And retconning was the right word, but. I feel like it hurts a little bit to take some of the flaws out of the book. It's probably not a... Probably doesn't make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. Number 43 is Carrie. Uh, the first book, the one that got him on the map. It, it It's a good story, but it is really a novella that's just been padded a little bit. Uh... It, it It's not the king that I first got to know. It's not even the king that we see in Salem's Lot in The Shining. It, but it did get him on the map. And some of the stuff in the book is iconic. So not my favorite book, obviously. But it's a decent enough book that I think could have been pared down a little bit, little bit and put in a, a, a story collection. Number 42. Been a while since we've seen him. It's Richard Bachman, The Running Man. The Running Man is just a fun read. Uh, I, King says that he wrote it like in a 72-hour period. It reads like that in a good way. Um, but it, it, it's not very deep. Um, and if you haven't read it and you've seen the movie, it's nothing like the movie except that the character has the same name. That The movie is campy. The book is not. The, the book is a Richard Bachman book. It's not going to end well. Do any of his books, Richard Bachman books, end well? I don't think so. But still a good book. Uh, one of the higher ranked Richard Buckman books. Uh, number 41 is The Gunslinger. Uh, it's not my favorite of the, the Gunslinger series. Uh, it's markedly different from the, well, every other book in the series. Uh, book one 
mainly is about Roland. And Roland isn't a fun guy to hang around with. The books markedly improve when you add Eddie and Susan and, and Jake. Jake makes an appearance in here, but it, it's not really as a companion. But at least it's somebody else that's not just Roland. Uh, it does have probably King's greatest opening line. Uh, the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. It's, it's a great line. A weird comparison, but this is like the first season of Parks and Rec. And like, well, you kind of have to see it to kind of get to know things. But it really starts in book two. Number, number, number 40. Oh, God. Is Under the Dome. Better move away, Wash. If I drop this on you, you might get killed. Honestly, I'm surprised it ranks this high because it is a big book. It has a lot of characters. It, it has a town selectman. And I got to be honest, when I see the words town selectman, related to king i'm already like oh and it has aliens king and aliens uh probably like technology you should probably stay away from aliens but there were a lot of it it's a fun read i just the, the aliens is really what dragged it it down for me and not necessarily because there were aliens i don't have a problem with that i just don't think that king particularly does aliens well so that's number 40 all right uh before we go on i just want to explain a little something for especially for those who have watched my five-year battle stephen king when i did five-year battle stephen king when i went into each video i did not have any idea what i was going to pick as far as the order goes Obviously, before I did this video, I sat down and went over the order quite a bit, actually. The five-year battles were my feelings in the moment. This was more of a deliberate choice. And you will see specifically with one book that comes up, but other ones as well, that the order has kind of shifted in books that may have been higher up uh, on the five-year battles, maybe lower, or books that are lower, maybe higher up. I feel fairly comfortable with what I have now, but of course, feelings change over time too. As I mentioned with some of the books that I like them better upon rereads, in the future, there may be books that are lower that move up and higher that move down, but this is what it is right now. So let's go ahead and go, let's go ahead and go with number 39, which is Mr. Mercedes, which is the first book in the Bill Hodges trilogy. I think the best book introduces us to Bill Hodges and uh, Brady Hartz, I forget his last name, and, and Brady Hartfield. I, I think it's overall just a very good novel. It doesn't contain necessarily a supernatural element that we see in the third book. And uh, obviously with Stephen King, I don't mind supernatural elements, but I just don't feel like it was needed in these books. So, very good book. Shows King kind of leaning towards uh, more mystery thriller type of books which i enjoy i know some people don't necessarily enjoy as much but still think it's a very good book uh number 38 is the short story collection just after sunset contains many stories that i really like including a very tight place novella which was pretty up high on my uh ranking of novellas list just several good stories. A, a few that I don't like. I didn't like N, uh, an, a novella that I ranked pretty lowly. In. So, uh, also, I did not like Graduation Afternoon. I, I, I think if you would remove those two, there are other ones that are like, 
eh, that are that are okay, but those two I really just disliked. So good collection though. Number thirty-seven, Needful Things, the last Castle Rock story. It's not the last Castle Rock story, but still, it is a very good Castle Rock story. It also does something that should have been done in the dark half and made Sheriff Alan Pangborn the main character. Uh, he's just a very good, consistent character to see everything through. Uh, the devil comes to town and opens a shop and sells stuff that people want. And they don't pay money, but they pay a price. It, it, it's an old type of story, but it's still told very well. And it gets a little batshit crazy, and that's enjoyable. Number 36 is Salem's Lot. Uh, perhaps you'll be surprised that it, it's down this low. I do think it is a very good story. Uh, uh, basically a retelling of... Uh, Dracula, except uh, vampires have come to a small town in America. I read this, and I was very scared. I was very young when I read it, and I saw the miniseries. The miniseries totally freaked me out. I just don't... I don't think that King had quite mastered characters in the way he does later. Not to say that they're written badly, but... He certainly hadn't mastered writing women yet, and perhaps you will say he still hasn't, but he's definitely done a better job in, in my estimation. And a lot of the characters are not fully developed. The, the story itself is all fine and good. I, I, I like the main characters, Ben and Mark. Uh, Father Callahan obviously comes back uh, in the Dark Tower series, but it just hadn't upped his game enough yet on characters for it to get much higher for me. And you will you will notice that characters is very important for me. That's a reason why some of the books other people will have high up, I don't because the characters don't work. In other books, the people don't rate highly i do because of the characters a good character will jump it up quite a bit for me number 35 is desperation which is of course uh written along with the regulators as i said before it, it's not what it is but if, if you were to sum it up in one quick sentence this book is about god the regulators is about television it, it's a lot more complicated than that, but I think the characters in here are more interesting. Uh, I, I believe that the discussion about God is very interesting too. Perhaps if you're religious or perhaps if you're an atheist, you might not like it. But as someone who's like somewhere in between those two, I, I greatly enjoyed the book. I greatly enjoyed the characters. Uh, tack itself, eh, it was fine, but as a vehicle to tell the story, it worked well. Uh, I loved reading this book quite a bit, but I do skip around a little bit, gloss over some sections. Number 34 is Four Past Midnight. I will be quite honest. The reason it ranks this highly is because of two of the novellas. The Langoliers is a ridiculous novella, but it's still greatly enjoyable to me. It's, it's just fun. The Library Policeman, which I know is not a lot of people's favorite novella, is, is one of my favorites. I just, I, I really love it. And I think it explores a very dark subject. Uh, very well, and I greatly enjoy it. Secret Window, Secret Garden. It's written well. I just really dislike the main character. It's so in, in a way, it's kind of like app app people for me. It's like I know it's good, but I don't like it. 
And the Sun Dog is just completely forgettable to me. So, yes, only two of the four novellas would I say are like great, but I think they're really great each in their own ways. Number 33, and let me preface this before you see this book, that there are two versions of this book, just like there were with the Gunslinger. So, just wait. But number 33 is the complete and uncut The Stan book. I said during The Gunslinger that I don't really necessarily like revised editions. There is some good in this. Uh, the part where King goes over what happened to people who survived the super flu, but then uh, died afterwards. I love that section. But a lot of the stuff with Trash Can Man, and it, it, there's 400 pages of additional info. And honestly, you probably could have got by with 50, if that. I don't think it was needed. I also didn't like that he changed the date from the 70s to, I believe, the early 90s. I don't, I don't like it when authors do that. They change the time frame. He he writes other books, like he wrote stuff in the uh, 2000s that went back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, etc. So I don't know why he needed to change this. So there is good in this, but generally, if I'm going to read The Stand, I'm going to read the 1978 version. Number 32, and I apologize for the condition of this book, I'm replacing the few paperbacks that I still have left with hardback. Some of them are a little bit difficult to get for a decent price, but is Christine. Christine is the first novel, I believe, that I read from Stephen King. I could be wrong on that, but it's definitely the first one that I remember reading. Not the first Stephen King I read, but the first one I remember reading as a novel. I really loved it at the time. I was a teenager. And much like Rage, it kind of spoke to me as a teenager. And this one does, as, as someone who's older now, I kind of see the characters are not, again, I use this phrase, not fully developed as they could have been. I, <laughs> I really dislike that in the second part of the novel, it went to... Uh, third person narration when the first and the last part of it are in first person that just bothers me for some reason and uh i enjoyed it but yeah it's just one of those ones that i don't enjoy now as much as i once did but i do love that it starts uh basically each section with a a song about cars or driving that's uh also where i kind of started to get interest in Bruce Springsteen. Number 31 is Joyland, which is another hard case crime book. Uh, it's his best of the three that he's published. Basically, a, a young man goes to work at a, a carnival for the summer, and it's about his time there. There is a murder mystery. There is an older woman. There's a strange child. Uh, but it's it's something that King does well is write about a nostalgic time. I don't think it necessarily fits well in the Hard Case Crime series, but it's just a great book, and I wish that he would write more books like this rather than later or The Colorado Kid. Uh, number 30 is The Eyes of the Dragon which is also the only book that I have ever read in a foreign language. I read this in Italian. I don't really know Italian, but I was doing Duolingo, and I read these two books side by side. Uh, it's just a fun tale. It's a, it's a book that he wrote for his daughter, who wasn't a fan of horror stories, and it's connected to the Dark Tower somewhat. It has Randall Flagg in it. It's a fairy tale. And if you go into it knowing it's a fairy tale and knowing what kind of people you have in fairy tales, 
I think it's an excellent one. I, I do think it kind of lulls a little bit after Peter's put in prison and after his escape attempt in the ending. But overall, I, yeah, I just really loved it. Number 29 is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Uh, it is a short book, pretty close to novella, but just long enough that it's probably a novel, uh, about a girl who gets lost in the wood. About a girl who gets lost in the woods. And she tries to find her way out. It's a pretty simple tale. Not really supernatural, although there may seem to be some supernatural elements. Baseball related, sort of. The girl has a favorite baseball player, Tom Gordon, uh, who kind of speaks to him in her mind while she's trying to find her way out. It's a very simple tale. I... I don't think it's very high up on other people's list. I, I don't necessarily know why. I just think it's it's a, a delightful tale. And I just really like it. it. There just happens to be other books that I think are better. But we're definitely in the, the good to great area of the list here. And we've been for a little bit. Number 28 is The Institute. Uh, which is one of his more recent books. I think this is a great book. Now, why isn't it, say, in the top ten? I, it's something that other people have noticed, is that, okay, King is in his 70s now. Like technology, like aliens, he should either have people help him with research or just move away from having children talk because he doesn't have the lingo down. And uh, you often have the same type of children in recent King books because King just doesn't really understand the way children talk nowadays. And I'm not being insulting. I, I don't. And I have a child in high school. And, it, it, you know, some of the stuff they say to their friends i'm just like what uh but even though the kids in here don't really talk the way kids talk uh i still like the kids i like the story it's a bit of a darker tale i won't say the ending but was it a happy ending it's a good book uh number 27 <laughs> not high up on a lot of people's list uh it, it is Black House, written with Peter Straub. For some reason, I don't understand, but both The Talisman and Black House are generally disliked by the Stephen King fan community. Uh, I I love it. If you don't love it, I'm not going to judge you. But I just, I really, you got two excellent writers at work here. And yes they're playing a little and they're having some fun, but, but I like it. I can understand why, especially like as soon as you get introduced, there's a lot of author intrusion in here. Basically. Oh no, it, it's us, the authors talking to you. And I can understand why people may not like that. I enjoy it. If it's done well, I think it's done well. Uh, we get to meet Jack Sawyer again, obviously, there are characters from the Talisman that we don't get to meet for some obvious reasons. Others that we just get a brief glimpse of. And I, I'll be quite honest. I will just say Richard, even though he appears very shortly in here, this probably would have ranked one or two higher if, if they hadn't done that to Rational Richard. It, and it's a strange thing for me to get, you know, picky about but i didn't like it i understood it but i didn't like it and i won't spoil it for you it's nothing drastic but yeah just 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 a good book uh is is the biker gang a little like eye rolly yeah but i still enjoyed them so uh number 26 is full dark no stars 
I have to be honest, when I was making this list, I didn't expect this to be up that high. Because when I think of novella collections, obviously I think of different seasons. I think of Four Past Midnight, but I, I don't think that any of these novellas match up to the novellas in different seasons. And I definitely think the Library of Policemen is better than any of these. But this has three very good novellas in here. 1922, Big Driver, and A Good Marriage. A Fair Extension is also in here. One, I don't really know. I don't think it would qualify as a novella. It's really a short story. And it's not a bad short story. It's just King has done it before, several times, actually. And I don't find it particularly interesting. But again, it, it's it's less than 40 pages long, and the, and the book is over 360 pages. So you have 320 pages or so of great novellas in a so-so short story. I really loved A Good Marriage. I thought that was the best of a lot. Number 25 is Fairy Tale, which was published earlier this year. And I will say this, possibly some recency bias. Uh, I, I think it is good. I do think a, a case can be made, as I have said before, that King starts out really well and then kind of peters out a little bit. I really like the beginnings. I, I think I expected a bit more when he, he got to the other land. And I, I think that's part of it. I, I like, I actually like the ending because it's not necessarily the, the type of ending you would possibly expect from late stage Stephen King. Uh, it's another case. It, it's a teenager, King writing children. He just seems a little different than the other kids. So he doesn't talk like the other kids. Uh, but it's still a fun story. Now, will this book be one that moves down the list if I were to do this again next year? Possibly. Again, recency bias. But I, I greatly enjoyed it when I read it. We'll see what happens when I do a reread. Number 24, Duma Key. This is a great book. This is a book that would be eligible for my top 10, except there is one character in here, and I won't tell you who it is because it's, it's, pivotal, it's pivotal to the plot, who is mainly chess used for plot. And you know this person is used for plot. And I love to be emotionally manipulated. I don't like to feel like I'm being emotionally manipulated. And this character and what happens to this character makes me feel like I am emotionally manipulated. Otherwise, this is just an excellent book, but that one character, and if you've read the book, I think you know who the character is. It's a character whose relation to the narrator, that's their only purpose. Speaking of recency bias, number 23 is Holly. Now, I'll be quite honest. I do think that if I were to do this ranking next year, that this book would probably slide down a little bit. But I, I read this less than two weeks ago. I loved it. Did I see problems with it? Yeah, I saw problems with it. Something everybody has mentioned to talk about COVID and Trump and all that, which is not as prevalent, I believe, as other people do and makes sense in the book. And technology, that was an issue with me in here. Uh, remember, Holly runs a private investigation office and she doesn't think about cameras yeah but i love the plot i love the 
Holly in it. Holly, uh, who I had previously stated I thought only worked as a a supporting character. I think she works very well in the main role here. I I love the villains. They're octogenarian professors. Um, it, and they are essentially weak, like a lot of King villains are recently. But it works in this book. Uh, you can hit me up next year, see how I feel about it then. But right now, I feel comfortable with it here, with the understanding that it will probably slide down. Speaking of sliding down, number 22, Bag of Bones. Bag of Bones was at one point in my top five list. Not recently, but a while ago. I love the story. I also am one of those people who love when King writes about writers, writes about writing, writes about books, and that that just speaks to me. My problem is, is that, again, I've grown up, and seeing Mike and Maddie together doesn't work as well now as it did when I first read the book. Like I was saying in Duma Key, Maddie's kind of a character that is used almost entirely for plot purpose, only we don't really get to necessarily see her as a fully realized character. She's almost, in a sense, King's equivalent of a trophy girlfriend, and she's not allowed to be necessarily her own person in this novel. And that's why this book that used to be in my top five is in the 20s now. It's still an excellent book. It's still uh, a devastating book to read in some ways, both from uh, Mike's journey to Sarah Smiles and everything that happened to him that got him there and everything that uh, happened to make Sarah Smiles what it is but it's really hard to overlook that one part and that's the thing sometimes king just has something that's like "Ooh, that's not good but the rest of this is great and, and we will see that again really high up here number 21 is the dark tower 7 the dark tower is this a perfect book no does it highlight King's issues with villains? Yes. Is it overlong, perhaps? Probably. Does King have Stephen King as one of the characters in here? Yeah. Does it work? Maybe. I think so. Uh, do I still love this? Yes. Do I like the ending? Yes, I do. I know there are people out there who don't, and I understand it. You, you've gone through seven books and you're like, seriously, that's the ending? But it makes perfect sense to me for Roland. And I, I just love, well, I don't love Roland. Roland's okay. But I love Eddie and I love Susan and I love Jake and I love Oi. And get to spend that time with them is just, that's a trip I needed to take even though... Some of the trip was perilous. And we have to take the trip again. No spoilers. I'm not saying there's other Dark Tower stuff coming out. If you've read it, you know what I mean. Number 20. I said uh, Christine was the first novel that I read. The first Stephen King that I read was Night Shift. I don't remember if I read the entire book or certain stories, but I do remember that I read The Boogeyman and The Mangler from this book when I was eight years old. Probably not the wise thing to do when you're eight years old. This is Stephen King writing short stories as a, a poor young man. He doesn't get to, and not saying that I don't like it when he necessarily does, but he doesn't get to blow. He has to basically just tell his story in a certain amount of space 
and it mainly works. There, there are a few stories in here that I don't, I don't really care for Jerusalem's lot, but almost every other story in here I like. The woman in the room is kind of, eh, it's another one of those that was in response to uh, his mother's death. That ne doesn't necessarily work as well for me. The Last Rung on the Ladder is one of my favorite Stephen King story. And as John McDonald says in the introduction to it, it, there's nothing supernatural about it at all. It's just a devastating story. All right. Number 19 is Wizarding Glass, book four of the Dark Tower series. I like books two through four probably more than the, the rest of the series overall. I do have to say of those books, the Wizard and Glass doesn't do as much for me as the other one because a large portion of it is dedicated to the romance. Uh, and one, we already know that the romance is doomed. We, we know that. Two... It's a little hard to take seriously the the romantic troubles of a teenage boy, to be quite honest. Uh, that that's sad to say as somebody who used to be a teenage boy, but that's true. I I do like, you know, Roland and his quartet, both of them. Uh, I'm interested in that. I I do like. Susan Delgado. It's just. I don't necessarily care about the relationship between Susan and Roland. And that's. Again, that plays a large part of this huge book. And that's why it's not as high up as the other ones are. Number 18 is The Talisman, written with Peter Straub. Uh, again, not a popular choice. I, I I don't necessarily know why other people don't like it. Apparently, a lot of people don't like Jack, which, I mean, except for the fact that he's a teenage boy, which that's understandable. But uh, I I enjoy I enjoy the epic quest kind of stories. I enjoy both sides that he goes in the territories in our world. Uh, I enjoy the solution. I like Rational Richard. I like, well, I don't like, but I enjoy uh, the bad guy, Rational Richard's dad. Um, and it has wolf in it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't mean to judge you harshly, but if you don't like a book that has a wolf in it, I mean, who hurts you? No, it's cool. Number 18, I believe uh, King's highest story collection, Skeleton Crew. There are just so many uh, great stories in here. Uh, King does get to play a little bit more than he did it in the night shift. It's got the miss, which is a very good novella, not as high up for me as it is for other people, but still a great novella. Uh, Mrs. Todd's shortcut, one of my favorite stories, the jaunt, which is a completely messed up story that I love. It also has uh, a poem in here, which is, well, two poems, I believe. Yes, two. He has the Ballad of the Flexible Bullet, one of my definitely favorite novellas. Uh, the Reach, which is an, another story he's written that doesn't really, well, it touches upon the supernatural, but it doesn't really contain the supernatural. It's just a pretty straightforward story. There are a couple of ones in here, like the Milkman stuff, I don't care about at all. But overall, way, way, way more hits than misses in this. Number 16, Dolores Claiborne. People have said, and some people still say, not without reason, that King can't write women. And obviously I could point to the 70s and at least part of the 80s and say, you're not wrong, but I think 
in the 90s and beyond, King got better at writing women. And uh, Dolores Claiborne is written solely from the perspective of one woman talking in a police station for, uh, I mean, nearly 300 pages. How, how long was she at this police station? But it's, it's just a, a great tale um, about love and hate and what we will do for the ones that we love. Number 15. Lisi's story. Another one probably people won't agree with. Uh, a lot of people point to Susan Delgado and Roland as King's best love story. I, I think this one is more realistic and I, I like it better. I understand why the people don't. Also, uh, the husband who is dead at the beginning of the novel, Scott, hi. It is a writer, and again, I I like reading about writing. I understand that people get a little bit tired about King writing about writers, but I'm not one of those people. So, yeah, uh, I don't love the villain in here. I don't know. It's one of those times where I think King's going, there has to be a villain. I'm like, does there? Does there really? Couldn't you almost tell the same thing without him? I think so. But uh, everything else in here is great. And, and yeah, this is going to be one of the ones where people don't agree with me. Speaking of not agreeing with me, way back when, around book 39 or so, I talked about, like, I did the five-year battle Stephen King, and some books have moved up, and some books have fallen down. Uh, yeah, this one fell down. Number 14 is The Stand. See, the problem with doing this list is I really put a lot of thought into the books. And I just can't get over the flaws in The Stand. As I've already mentioned, King's not great at writing women at this point in his career. Uh, King's also not great at writing black people. And Mother Abigail is one of my least favorite characters. Not, not, she's in the top 10 least favorite characters for me. I think King kind of lost his way a little bit after they get the boulder. I think he killed off a character that he didn't need to simply because he did so to get the plot moving. I don't think the whole thing about Las Vegas was necessary. As I mentioned before, it's kind of like the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Did Indy really need to do anything for the end of that movie to happen? Did our guys really need to do anything for the end of this book to happen? No. I, I don't... <laughs> I, I don't like Stu and Franny's decision at the end. It doesn't make a lot of sense if you, you take the time to think about it. it you know, I mean, I, I'm sure everybody's read the book probably by now. Basically, a decision comes down to let's stay here or let's go somewhere else. And there's a lot of reasons to stay here. And, and whatever reasons you have to go someplace else doesn't make sense like especially for certain reasons and i can't go too much further without spoiling it so i won't but yeah it's just the more i think about the stand the less i like it i will say from the beginning of the novel until harold lauder speaks on that walkie-talkie in the committee that is a great novel. That's up in the top three, maybe. But all that stuff that happens after that, it just really brings it down for me. Number 13 is The Dead Zone. Uh, the Dead Zone, the best book King has written that I haven't read 
as much as I should have. I, I have read this many times, but I've read many other Stephen King books far more than I have read this one. But it is an excellent book. It, it's, it's well plotted. Uh, Johnny Smith is a great everyman, perfect kind of King character. Uh, some of the characters in here do things I'm kind of like, eh, but it, it makes sense for the type of writer King was at the time. Uh, I, I just love the whole reluctant hero uh, that Johnny Smith is, and I, I, I just love this book. It's just one that's like, oh yeah, I should read that again, and, and I probably will very soon. Number 12 is The Shining. It's a very good book about many characters that I dislike. Now, disliking characters and empathizing with characters are different things. I dislike almost every character in here except Dick Halloran and, and Danny. But I can still empathize with all the characters. So it's a great book about characters that annoy the shit out of me. Uh, some of the scariest scenes, particularly Room 217, uh, that I remember reading. And obviously, what we know about King now, he's writing about his own alcoholism in here. Uh, number 11 is 11-22-63. This is just a, a time travel book, an overall great book, a nostalgia book, which King is excellent about. As a political book, it, it, it's perfectly fine. It serves its purpose. The politics it doesn't really need to be delved into greatly for the purpose of the novel. Uh, a romance, pretty good romance, but even more so uh, a person living in a town in the past and becoming a, a member of that town. This is all stuff that is in King's wheelhouse. The only reason this isn't in the top ten, I don't like the ending. I, I mean, pretty much, I think... You know what the ending's going to be pretty early in the book, probably within the first 100 pages. You know what the ending's going to be, and it's that ending. Can it be anything other than that ending? I think so, but I, I'm not the writer. Apparently, King had a different ending, but his son, Joe Hill, talked him into this one. I almost wish that we had seen the original one just to see what it was like, because the the ending's fine, but it's so expected. The book is great. Uh, book number 10. We're in the top 10 now, baby. Uh, this is one of those books that has risen over time since it came out. I, I, don't, I don't know that it, I would have had it in my top 25 uh, after I first read it, but it has just risen up. It is Revival, I believe. Other people will say Pet Cemetery, but I believe that this is his darkest tale. To me, this is a lot like, hey, what if Richard Bachman wrote good books with interesting characters? It, and we'll see. We'll see. Uh, this is just... It, it's it's two different books that are pretty much seamlessly integrated together. It's a nostalgia book at the beginning, and it's just a dark horror tale in the second half. Uh, I will not tell you spoilers, but if you like, I need to read a happy book to get me in my happy place, which, hey, we all do. This ain't that book, but it's an awesome book. And number nine is The Dark Tower 3, The Wastelands. 
Roland has his contact and they're journeying to the Dark Tower. Roland is struggling mentally because he has two different versions that he's living, essentially, or two different paths. And we meet Blaine the Mono. I love Blaine the Mono. And just Eddie and Susanna. And we get introduced to other characters that I, I, you, you need to meet them yourself without me spoiling for them. Uh, I, I think there's just a little bit, just a tiny bit of wasted plot in here. I think this book probably could have been just a little bit shorter, but that's like my only complaint with it. Is I, Again, I have to say, books two through four, just excellent books. Speaking of books two through four, number eight is The Drawing of the Three, The Dark Tower Part Two. This is where we get to meet the three. Eddie and Susanna. Eddie Dean is my favorite supporting character in the King universe. He's probably my second favorite character overall. We will meet the favorite soon. Uh, it's <sighs> Roland needed them. Roland especially needs Eddie. Eddie makes Roland a far more interesting character. And I'm just thinking of a Dark Tower series without Eddie Dean, it's just really hard for me to think about. Just love Eddie so much. Um, and I I actually enjoy Roland overall, not just because Eddie's there, but because Roland's learning, which we will see is important for Roland to do. And it's been a while been a long while since we've seen this man. But Mr. Richard Bachman, you have book number seven in The Long Walk. It's just a great read. A uh, hundred boys walk at a pace of four miles an hour, and if they go under that pace three times within a set time limit, they're eliminated. And when they're eliminated, they're eliminated. And it, it's just, it's that race until we get to the end of the race. And what does the race mean? Well, it's a Bachman book, so it ain't good. But it's just, I, I, I love the way that King writes this. This is m my favorite Bachman book. I, I love the book, and I just wish that the other Bachman books reach the same level. Somebody be brave enough to make this into a movie. I know it's difficult. It's 100 boys walking, but it can be done. Number six, The Green Mile. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm not ranking the individual books uh, the, as they were first published. I'm ranking them all as one book. Uh, Paul H. Comb is just one of King's best everyman characters. Uh, John Coffey is, yeah. yes, he's essentially a magical Negro character. He's essentially John Coffey, J.C. Oh, J.C., hmm. Yes, true, but it's still a great tale. I, I love all the characters in here. Uh, even the characters I really don't like. The last section is devastating in so many ways. This is King being nostalgic and being dark as hell without you really knowing about it until too late. Just an amazing book that 
I, I think people like, but not as much as I think it should be liked. And people probably just know the movie better. And the movie's good, but it's not the book. Number five, which this book just kind of missed out in the uh, five-year battle of Stephen King just because it was in the same five-year period as another book. But it is Misery, which, again, was originally intended to be a Bachman book. Imagine that, two Bachman books in the top ten. I, I feel ridiculous almost telling you, but a, a, an author uh, has an accident and is taken in by a ex-nurse who claims to be his number one fan. And she ain't right in the head. And so it's just, it's just, oh, wow. A, a basically a claustrophobic space that these two people are in for most of the book. And even, even King's writing of this second rate romance book in here just adds to the book. Again, I love reading about writers and writing. I think that this is just one of those cases where other people love this too. This is just a great, great suspense book. And it, it's probably one of King's most well-plotted. One is his most compact. There's not a lot of fluff in here that you might find with other King's book. It's just... It's straight and to the point, and it's it's in your head for a long time. Number four. What did I say? I said I like writers and writing and stuff. And oh yeah, on writing, uh, obviously King's highest rated nonfiction book for me. It is basically almost a a college course about writing, as well as a slight memoir and uh, just almost a short story about his accident that he had. It's just a, a wonderful book. If you write, not if you write novels or you write short stories, if you write, you should read this book just for the writing advice alone. This probably does as much for me as Strunk and White did, if not more. And it's just, uh, it's an amazing book. I, I don't remember how many nonfiction Stephen King books there are, but I've read this one more than all the rest combined. So just an excellent book. I said that Skeleton Crew was his best short story collection. It's not his best collection overall, though, because number three is Different Seasons, uh, which there's nothing bad in here. I'm even including the afterword in here, which is entertaining to read. I, I did a ranking of all 41 Stephen King novellas at one point, and the novellas in here are 1, 2, 3, and 13. Uh, I'll just let you know number 13 is At Pupil, which is an excellent novella about characters I do not want to read about. Uh, has the Body, which was made the movie Stand By Me. Just excellent, excellent, excellent story. The only problem with that is it's also got the short story story. Fed City in there, which is not needed at all. Uh, Reader Hay Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, which of course was made in the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, just an excellent novella on its own. Better than the movie. Yes, I said it. I know people don't agree. Excellent movie, but it doesn't match uh, the book. And The Breathing Method, which is my number one novella. A sleeper novella. Uh, definitely not one that a lot of people would pick even as the top novella in here, much less King's best novella. But it's it's just 
struck all the elements with me. Uh, a storytelling club, uh, a horror tale, and a tale about strength. If you haven't read The Breathing Method, please do so. Uh, I know, I know, like a lot of these, as I mentioned near the beginning, a lot of the novellas are published individually, and sometimes people just buy those. Uh, just buy this and read The Breathing Method. Number two, I said before, I think my most controversial take was that The Shining wasn't a good movie adaptation of the book. This might be actually my most controversial take because my number two is insomnia which is generally not uh people's top pick top 10 pick top 25 pick it has ralph roberts who is my favorite king character he's a elderly man whose wife has died he develops insomnia starts waking up early and earlier each day and that leads to him having different abilities and there is a bit of a slog in the middle of the book i admit but the first half of the book and definitely the last chapter of the book i just love that that last chapter of the book as i say every time i talk about insomnia that is the piece of writing that i have read more than anything else in the world so I just love this book. I love Ralph Roberts. <sighs> if you don't like it, it's okay. It's okay. You have a book that's in your top ten that other people are like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> Ghost Brothers of Darkland County. <laughs> There's somebody out there that that's their favorite book. Leave a comment. <laughs> If that's the case. Number one, well, you probably guessed and you say, hey, I haven't seen this book yet. Uh, number one is it. Basically encompasses everything about King as a writer. A lot of people say that the Dark Tower is his magnum opus. And yeah, that's probably true overall. But if you were to point to one book as his magnum opus, it's it. It it's everything that he has to say about horror, and you will see after it that he tends to not fully remove himself from horror, but approach it in a different way. This is like this is his monster book in more ways than one. It's one of his best nostalgic books. You know, talking about the time that he was growing up. Uh, the Losers Club is great all together. I love pretty much all the characters in there. The, the bad guys, not counting Pennywise, of course, but the, the secondary bad guys are, eh. I, as a, I like Henry Bowers as a bad guy, and Patrick Hofstetter is, like, freaking me out. But I don't really enjoy... Uh, Beverly's husband, I believe Tom Rogan. He he kind of reminds me of Norman in Rose Matters. Just like, oh, okay, it's a little bit over the top. Except it's not really over the top, but I just wish he was a better written character. And yes, it has that one scene. It's it's very hard to look at that one scene. And if you know, if you know, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, just be aware there's a scene you're going to be like, whoa! Uh, I think there are ways to look at it where it's like, you could talk yourself into saying, yes, I understand how this happened. And the way it was written was not written badly. It's just that it happened. It's like, but I'll be honest, when I read the book, I skip over that section. But I read pretty much everything else. And this is a book I have read dozens of times. 
It's also an 1100 page book that I've read dozens of times. So that is it. That is my top 91 Stephen King book. Did I miss a book? Is there a, was there a screenplay published uh, that went out of print like Silver Bullet that I didn't get? Was there some book like Nightmares in the Sky that he contributed essay to that I missed? Is there anything like that? I I looked on Wikipedia. I eliminated the books that I don't think were needed to be on here for the purposes of this, as I explained at the beginning. But did I miss a book? Did I grossly misrank a book according to your own thoughts? Let me know. What do you think is your number one book? What is your number 91 book? Do you have Ghost Brothers of Darkland County as your number one book? Do you have Blockade Billy? Do you have any book in my bottom 20 as your number one book? Let me know. Let me know why. If it's there for you, great for you. If you enjoy a book, that's awesome. Okay, there are some books where I won't say that's awesome. But generally, reading is cool. <laughs> Stay in school. That's it. I don't know how long this video is going to be because I filmed it in batches. So we'll see when I edit it together. I apologize. I do know it's going to be long. I just don't know how long. Uh, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you. Let's do this again sometime and watch my rankings be completely different. I will talk to you next time. Thank you very much.